Right, Sophie for Culture Compass, I'm here with Dan Kroll. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. How are you doing? Not too bad, thank you. Now, I've just been listening to you, yeah. cracking harmonies. Thank you very much, yeah. Are I you? Can't, can't take full credit for that, that's my boys as well. I was going to say, are you quite pleased with them? Because they've just come off a flight. They could have been a bit ropey. Yeah, they've literally just straight from the airport, direct from Austin, and they're knackered. But uh, very proud of them. They did very well. Rock and roll stars, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I used to it. That's I've good. got a sense that you're rock and roll by the sandwich talk. I hear you're big fans of sandwiches and Pret. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's not just a sandwich, though. That's Pret is something else. It's a work of art. <laughs> the uh, posh pickle and artisan cheddar. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, you've even got a stool from yeah. Pret in your house or something? Yeah, I kind of stole one. But hopefully they don't hear <laughs> this. Yeah, I, I stole one. But um, I needed a stool. And that was the and best stall you them, could find. And I've given them so much of my money through <laughs> sandwiches and coffees and everything that I thought... It's fair dues, isn't it? It's fair dues, yeah. Now, on a day of uh, a concert tonight, which you're doing with London Grammar, do you like to have distractions of doing press and sessions and stuff beforehand? Or would it, ideally, would you like to get in a zone and just kind of be with yourself? No, I think it, this is all really fun. I, okay. I think I just get... You, you get a bit bored when, and I, th I think that's a little bit, it's always a little bit pretentious when it's just like, I need to get into the zone <laughs> yeah. and everything. We're messing about right up until we go on stage. Mm. It's all about having fun and I'd rather be out active and doing this kind of thing and playing with the guys than yeah. sat in my room twiddling my thumbs. So yeah, this is a lot funner. So do you feel nerves a few hours before or you just totally calm? No, I've definitely come to just be, be fine. I'm totally calm. I still have like my odd anxious moment on stage mm. with other things but in, in terms of like actual performance jitters or anything like that no I don't get those anymore which is nice what about the other guys do you have to calm them down or are they as cool as the cucumber as well the guys are great as well we've been playing together in various bands for the past five or six years before that they've been playing in all kinds of other bands mm. and so they're they're totally professional they're great That's good. now um this is a one-off gig because it was rescheduled. Mm. Is that hard to kind of get in the gig zone again? Do you prefer it when you're doing a run and you get into a rhythm rather than these one-off? Yeah, I, I do agree with that. That's, uh, it, it is always nice to, to have like a run of gigs. And like I've got the March and April talk, UK and US. Yeah. They go straight into each other. It's UK non-stop. Next day after the last show of the UK, flying out, playing a gig, and then it's... It's kind of like a month in America and so it's I love doing that because you're focusing on it it becomes routine and you start to not even be able to you don't even think about it you just turn you know go through the motions every day and it's yeah. really nice whereas when it's just a one-off one I suppose you can you can be maybe too relaxed sometimes or you're not really th taking it seriously sometimes yeah. or on the other hand you can probably get more nervous about it because it might just be one big singular gig that you just like you've got so much time either side to think about and then reflect yeah. on and you can you know are you going to yeah. kind of use this one as kind of a warm-up for your tour then see how things yeah. go down and yeah it's only a half an hour set so it's it, that goes so fast mm -hmm. um and so try out maybe try out a couple of new ones and stuff but We've got some like in stores coming up and other bits to try out new stuff and we've been slowly trying out new stuff off because you know we still need to play some of the songs on the album and yeah. then but it's all part of the fun. I don't want to be over rehearsed. It's half half the fun is finding out how to do it, yeah. how to do it right, how to do it wrong, and developing. So it's have good you fun. found any of the songs that you made on the record when you could use like synths and mm. all the all the knobs and things to yeah. make things better when you perform them live and you've been like oh god we've yeah. played this hard for ourselves some of them is some of them have been a nightmare because it's just me in the studio and it's yeah. just like like you say you can layer up how you want you can move you can edit you can chop and mm. yeah there's been some songs that have been incredibly hard and a lot of the time i don't think about singing it and playing it at the same mm. time and so some of the kind of rhythms that I've got to sing over the top just it's taken me a long time to get my head around and there's one yeah. song in particular I'm not looking forward the to the bane of your life. life yeah because I know it's gonna you know it's gonna haunt me yeah. you know but as I say it'll be fun it's a challenge oh um, god I'm can ready. you tell us what song that is so we can watch and listen out it's a song called Ever At Your Side okay. and it's like a yeah weird rhythmic pattern and then a straight vocal which completely 
mismatch each other. So Tricky business. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> now, did I hear that your sister's coming to the show tonight? She is, yeah. my dear sister. I'm does, looking forward to that. Does it make you more nervous when you have loved ones watching you? Because I know I hate it when they used to watch me play the flute and orchestra. I'd be, no, be shaking. I'm, I think I'm used to it. Mm. I think um, they've attended a lot of my gigs. And I think at the start it was, but not really anymore. I think the one thing that would probably make me nervous and has made me nervous is looking out and seeing someone who like kind of inspires me greatly like we played a gig in um, Oslo Norway and kind of looked out into the audience and Grizzly Bear were there Grizzly Bear a massive influence for me and just seeing that instantly made me kind of really shaky you know but I think I held on all right yeah you really want to impress them don't you that's that's the the thing thing. yeah Yeah. you know that would be my kind of dream collaboration to work with those guys so you say I've got to impress them if I (laughs) mess this up I'll never work with them or I'll never meet them and no, it was good. Did you follow it up with a tweet saying, nice seeing you tonight, guys? To get- for the night oh, and the yeah. next day as well, and um, they're incredible guys, yeah. That's good. You don't want them to be horrible when you no, meet these exactly. people, these heroes. So a lot of people say don't meet your heroes, yeah. don't they? So mm. thanks. So, so, so far, it's all been good. <laughs> you know. That's good. Now, you got to collaborate with Lady Smith, Blackman Bertha, didn't you? Some heroes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did you feel that morning? Was it like <laughs> Christmas? Were you excited or was there a bit of... I was really, really kind of... I was relieved because previously I was very worried because mm. like the day before, unfortunately, we got the news that Nelson Mandela had passed away mm. and it nearly kind of cancelled the whole tour because Lady Smith had to sing it. You know, we're going to, you know, we're honoured to be invited to sing at his funeral because right. Mandela and Lady Smith were very close, um, and big fans of each other. Mm. And so I was like, oh, I think this is going to be cancelled, yeah. you know. And we couldn't get a response until the very last minute, so we couldn't cancel the flights and it was just oh, like... <laughs> And then so as soon as I got the go-ahead, I was on the plane. And then it was like relief. Mm. And then in a way made me more relaxed when I actually met them because it was like, oh, I'm so grateful yeah. that I'm here. Yeah. I'm so thankful for this. So they were, And they were incredible. Um, a lot of them are kind of getting on a bit. They've been going since 1964, 68. Wow. And um, unfortunately, so I think some of the original members have passed away, but it's, they're very much all about regenerating with the youth of today. And so there's a lot of kids that have come in and it's amazing and whilst I was out in America last week they were touring America and they'd take, taken their first youngest member out and it was just I was just thinking what a great experience for him mm. you know to be out of to be out of kind of South Africa and townships to be touring America with Lady Smith Lamont Quite eye-opening. Yeah it really is and I think they're very like that they're very humble and very caring and they're great. Now the fact that they said yes to doing that did it make you feel confident about reaching out to other people, people that you thought maybe were out yeah. of reach. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it took a lot to prove to them. And I think, you know, we had to really go for it and met up with their manager and everything. So kind of went through all the stages, almost like interviews and stuff like yeah. that. And it was great. And yeah, gave me a lot of confidence in approaching more people. Not right now, because I think I kind of feel like I'm busy enough with the yeah. <laughs> album coming out in like six days or something. Um, and so, but it's great because once the big tours are out the way and maybe in the summer when it comes becomes a bit more relaxed with festivals and weekdays are kind of open and free yeah. I'd love to work with as many people as possible I've always been brought up as like even though I've been a solo artist it's always been about working with others even mm-hmm. if it's just being a solo artist but having these you know, my, my boys kind of backing me yeah. it's working with them and stuff so I've always been wanted to be part of a group of people and working with everyone so so you don't mind relinquishing control when it comes to things, or do you still kind of keep a tight rein when it comes to the big decisions? Oh, well, that's a good point. I think a bit of both. Yeah. A bit of both. I think if it's if it becomes serious, I've got to put my serious hat on, mm. then I will. And it's your name that. fronting it, so you've got to be yeah, proud well, of it, of haven't you? Yeah, yeah, so I wouldn't let anything jeopardise anything or stand in the way, but yeah. at the same time, I'm happy to. I love bringing people in and sharing responsibility and everything like that so. well that's a nice bit sharing the responsibility yeah, it's isn't great it? take yeah. the pressure oh, off the you have that <laughs> yeah. take that yeah that's great now the album you said is more like a mixtape because you've got songs from many years separated and of different styles and stuff have, yeah. has anyone said to you no it needs to be more cohesive more obviously cohesive you need to do it um, more or they just said go for it whatever works for you no, i've been very lucky and had people backing me up with this album i've got a fantastic team around me who you know have given me that kind of creative control to do that yeah. and maybe 
maybe it's because it's they feel it's also time for change and for people to kind of write less cohesive albums mm. in a way play about with experimenting and doing other things you don't have to don't have to record it in the same place with the same people with same instruments same sound it can you can do it wherever you want you know mm. possibilities are endless you just need to take a bit of a a risk and do it now you recorded it in a gym is that right like an old primary school yeah. gym yeah so that's quite affordable i imagine compared to so studios affordable. <laughs> so affordable that's what i'm saying you don't need to spend yeah. that much you know we did that on a, such a small budget because it's you know it's kind of done before i was signed or anything like that so it was great and um, beautiful old school gym wooden floors and really nice good acoustics and everything great acoustics mm. and it had like all the old gym apparatus still there like monkey bars and climbing ropes and love to have a go on them again badminton court in there yes right. <laughs> living the dream yeah that i was yeah, yeah. that was <laughs> take me back there yes. that was great so yeah. if you got oodles of cash would you still do it budget yeah, or I would. You would. yeah i really would and i think a lot of people would say no you would <laughs> yeah we'll yeah, see absolutely. but there's honest honestly when i i've had you know i've been lucky enough to go into a lot of kind of big shiny studios and stuff and it's just not for me in terms of like all of these live rooms and i'm very against splitting up the drummer from the guitarist yeah. splitting up the guitarist from the vocals doing things you know in boxes and stuff like that i want like the great thing about the school was that there was just one big open space and every instrument around you not only being there the instruments but being plugged in and ready to record mm. and it meant that you could invite your mates in and just be like just do that and you just hit record and it'd be recorded and you didn't mm. have to dismantle a drum kit set it up again record it dismantle the drum kit set up a guitar amp just you know it's doesn't feel organic it holds, and natural then creativity it? sometimes mm. whereas a place like the school or any big open space and some cheap gear mm. and a lot of mates does it does creative creative creativity just doesn't stop you know it's great now, how were you when it came to whittling down the tracks that made the album so it kind of did flow? Was that a hard mm, process for you? That was really tough. Mm. There's, yeah, there's been quite a few songs that have, that unfortunately didn't make the cut. Um, but not to say that they're done, you know, they're finished. They're, mm. uh, you know, there's songs on this album that have had a couple of years to blossom in a way and be worked on more and go through different types of production and stuff. Um and you know the reason why I didn't pick maybe some of these songs because I thought well they haven't had that opportunity to to be really looked at and worked so in a way I've just saved them for maybe hopefully the next album or an EP or you know a rainy day. That's a good thing about what you do is if if you're not planning each album at a time you can they're never gone forever the songs no, you can always go back like to them. I, I refuse to leave those songs you know I'm very proud of those ones as well they just maybe fit fit other songs better or yeah. they just need that time to kind of blossom develop really now i just want to refer back to america again mm -hmm. was it always a dream for you as an artist to conquer america that big thing that everyone or was it just i'm going to take the opportunities that it come was, and it was I've, I've only really been doing it for well i feel professionally or studying it or whatever but um writing songs for like five years mm. wasn't my career as a kid choice uh, career choice as a kid or anything like that so Five years sounds like a lot of time. It's gone insanely fast. Mm. And I was like starting out as a musician thinking, oh, I can't wait to play a gig or I can't wait to well, play a gig in the local pub. I can't wait yeah. to make some demos and leave them in the local record store. And then suddenly it's been like, can't wait to go to America. And so it's <laughs> unbelievable and incredibly grateful for every opportunity like that. But I never had that dream, mm. which... I'm glad I didn't because it's made it even an even better feeling yeah. to being surprised, you know, and getting it just like, oh my God, we're going where? You know, it's like like with Ladysmith as well. I never dreamt I'd work with them. So didn't really have the th thought of like, I could work with them. It was like this thing that I could never reach. I never, I could never do that. And then suddenly it's like, it's happening. You're like, Jesus. Wow. Yeah, so right. what, what's next? What's on the dream scenario yeah. list? I'm trying not to kind of make any aims mm -hmm. really just I love being surprised so I think just got do you know do everything that I've got planned at the moment I'm really looking forward to the UK tour America tour some good festivals and there's going to be something mm -hmm. who knows yeah, what nice. I, I don't know myself but we'll see but I'm excited for it 
So it's Boardmasters is one of the UK ones, is yeah, it? Yeah, it's one of the And UK a German ones. one as well, did I see? Yeah, there's a few few more, a few that we can't just announce just yet. Oh, okay. What's the word? Yeah. But um, just got to, we'll, we'll tell soon. Okay. Yeah. Well, good luck for tonight. Thank you very much. No snorting, if no, you can avoid yeah. it. <laughs> that sounds really bad. It does it? I haven't explained yeah, that, have I? That makes me sound like I'm just snorting drugs before. Oh, yeah, I didn't mean there. that. <laughs> no. I'll put a little thing yeah. underneath the disclaimer. <laughs> it was my embarrassing moment on stage where I was quite tired and kind of snored on stage down the microphone <laughs> accidentally. It was like, I think it was during home as well, and it was like, oh, oh, like that. Was, was oh. it only a little one like that? Because that's acceptable. One. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't well, no, it was <laughs> Thank God it wasn't that bad. But, uh, I don't know why I just did that. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we end it there? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.